Icebox is a map with extreme verticality, a dangerous post plant, and a mid lurk that lets single players change the outcomes of the game. Learning all of its complexities would take hours and hours of studying professional gameplay. And that's exactly what I did to teach you how to dominate on Icebox. The Icebox guy is going to make a lot of people happy because unlike the Breeze Guide, this map actually, I'm going to be giving a lot of you options on who you want to main. I'm also going to be denying you options still. Like, I'm not going to let you pick Brimstone, but there's a lot more flexibility. I'm going to try to explain to the best of my capabilities why that is the case. There's two types of controller styles, Viper and Harbor. Omen doesn't fit, and you'll see why he doesn't fit. So on Icebox, there's, we're going to talk about the mini game right away. Um, I identify mini games on maps to help you come to decisions in the mid round because in the mid round, it's hard to decide what you should do um, because even with a playbook that just covers the first like 10 seconds. And so I try to give you this idea of some mini game that directs your decision making. So for example, on split, I talk about mid control and, and having heaven control for the post plant. And that mini game directs your decision making. On attack, you want to try and plant open and consider lurking into heaven or late lurking mid. On defense, you want to consider trying to deny the plant from the enemies if they're planting open. But if they're planting like default, sometimes you want to let them do it because the mini game states that'll be harder for them to play for heaven control so like on split is pretty straightforward this makes sense uh an enemy's planting here sometimes you'll let them plant an enemy's planting here you really want to stop it unless you have them all contained to sight because that's like the ultimate mini game on this map on icebox it's actually really really simple and i'm gonna bring up clips on icebox the mini game is plant denial boom, boom, boom. Got it so almost all the decision making you're going to see in a radiant icebox vod the game exists in two phases, pre-plant and post-plant. And the decision-making pre-plant is going to be very predictable when you think about the, the map this way. And this is why you're going to see agents like Sage and Harbor and even Gecko to an extent be decently strong. Why? Because they help you get the bomb down, which helps you play against a team that's denying the plant. You got that? That's why Sage, this is one of Sage's only good maps. Uh, because she can wall or wall and she can then go to plant the bomb so i'm gonna pull up a vod right now to sort of show you this mini game at play in a radiant lobby alongside one of the agents that i'm actually going to allow you to pick even though he's not really going to be seen in the pro scene much i think he's very strong in solo queue it's gecko the reason why i think gecko is pretty strong in solo queue on this map is because whoever has to plant is sort of uh on this map and if you don't have like sage or harbor it can be very hard to get that bomb down. Even with Gecko, it's going to be hard to get the bomb down. But at least with Gecko, you don't have to be the sacrificial lamb. Y you can literally go tell Wingman to like plant the bomb. And yes, he can jump up uh, these things. Oh, oops. I said go get him instead of plant. It shows you how much Gecko I play. Um, and note when Gecko's planting up here, he's shorter than like an agent so it's harder to deny but anyways this sort of shields you from the annoyances of planting the bomb so i think gecko is actually pretty good on this map and we'll get now more into awful. gecko Don't tech but humble. first i just want you to see this at play so here we have a saucy vod he's playing gecko there should be audio i guess there's no audio pistol round my bad but you'll see the enemy set up let's just talk about it they have an orb here not the only orb that's meta on this map but an orb here to deny plant they're already popping a Killjoy Molly on site to deny the plant. They've got Sova with shocks to deny the plant. They've got Raze with Nade to deny the plant. And look, this would be a suicide mission. If uh, we were like Sage or something, or even worse, we don't have any of that work and we just have to go plant. On this map, there's like a rule. If you don't have like Sage or whatnot, when you go to plant, you'll always tap the bomb and you'll back up. Like if you're hitting B and you're the bomb carrier, and you have to plant, but you don't have like Sage Wall or Harbor Cove, you'd always tap and like back up because that tap is going to trigger Molly, Shock, etc. Like all sorts of damaging details. So look, we send Wingman to plant and Zelsis goes to try and defend the bomb plant, but watch what happens. Raise Nade. Because what's the enemy team doing? They're playing plant denial. So if this was like a agent planting, we, we would have already been in trouble. Oh, there we go. We got audio. <laughs> I'm 
Let's go to the next plant attempt. So here you can hear the Vipers already mollied. Azelsa is getting some good sight control. So we're like, okay, well, maybe Wingman can plant. Is he to cover Wingman? Oh, but there's a Killjoy molly and a Viper molly. And so do you see how we're sort of trading Wingman for all of this util from the enemy team right now? Which is not a terrible trade, uh, but we can't get the bomb now. It's really annoying. Fortunately for you guys, you're not a thousand RR. And so your opponents are not going to be this good at stopping the plant. But ultimately, this is what you want to aim to do if you're playing on the defensive side. So we go back. Notice, what did we do? What did we do, chat? We tapped the bomb and we're already falling back. And why did we tap the bomb? Because it almost certainly caused this guy to throw a shock or this guy to throw her second molly or whatever. Now you got a ramp. Oh. Wingman's back. You can finally try to get the bomb down. But look. <laughs> Radiant players are so annoying. We, we have another shock dart. Wingman's down again. Wingman has died twice this round trying to plant the bomb. That's how hard these guys are playing for plant denial. You got it? So that's like the mini game. Okay, so we're constantly just trying to get this bomb down. And ideally, it will have like a harbor or a sage or something. But Gecko can shield you from that. So if you find yourself not wanting to rely on your team having sage or not, then I would suggest Flash Initiator players main Gecko on this map. If you are higher elo, like Immortal and up, I would recommend you learn KO and you flex to Gecko because you're allowed two picks anyways at Immortal and up. And you pick KO whenever your team has sage or harbor. And otherwise you pick Gecko as your like insurance. So I don't think he's the best pick. However, I think he's very useful in the solo queue environment where your team composition is frequently terrible. So in this scenario, if you're a flash initiator player, you're gonna pick Gecko. They said flashes aren't too good. They're not. There's a reason why KO is good and it's not because of his flashes. Let's think about it. Let's think about it. What's the mini game on Icebox? What's the mini game on Icebox? Talk to me. Plant denial. Yeah. And how's plant denial generally done? Util. What can KO do? I don't actually have the light up, but it doesn't matter. Kao can... Bam! No Viper Mollies. Or bam! Maybe they're back yellow. And there's a lineup where the knife lands top yellow, so it can't be broken. Bam! No Util to deny the plant. So Kao's generally picked on this map, not because of the flashes. The flashes are all right. Like, you can still use them to, like, fight for yellow or whatnot. But it's more that he has a nade. What's the nade good for? Plant denial on defense. He has a knife, which is really good for denying their plant denial. And his ultimate, of course, is very straightforward. So yes, KO's weakest ability on this map is his flash. You've correctly identified that. However, the suppression is really, really effective because of the mini game. We talked about plant denial, but we need to talk about like hitting each site. And there's like another mini game at play. There's like a sub mini game on this map. And this sub mini game, I'm going to pull up apologies for any uh, harry potter haters but i'm making a harry potter analogy you guys know how that stupid game called quidditch has like these whatever number of dudes we're gonna say four versus four and they're playing this game and then there's this side game that's the only thing that actually matters where it's like whoever catches this tiny golden ball actually just kind of wins the whole game anyways and so these dudes don't really matter that much you know what I'm talking about? So Icebox actually sort of has that mini game right here. This like sub mini game is, is essentially the lurking mini game on this map because Icebox is a map which is very unique where you frequently just run the full squad down one of these lanes barreling to hit the site, otherwise known as the 4v4 part of Quidditch. But then you have the Zane factor. You have your Seeker or whatever who tries to just win the whole round for your team for free. And this is where some people will not want to play this role. But if this is attractive to you, having this like level of solo impact, this is where I'm going to recommend Viper. Because Viper is like the giga lurker on this map. As opposed to Harbor, who's just going to like play with his team pretty much every round. Viper is going to be doing this lurking nonsense all the time. Uh, let me pull up an example from my own VODs channel. So I'm going to show you how I win this whole round for my team for free as the Seeker. So here's the enemy Seeker. Oh. They see me, Could be but like, what are they gonna do about it? They're gonna walk into my orb? Stop, Jen. Probably not. Yeah. Dink, dink, dink. She's like mega lit. Dead. 
Okay, so I got a kill. And now it's like all I have to do is stay alive. Close maze. And so I'm out here just being annoying. So the A players are all getting drawn mid to try and fight me. Fight I'm just her. hiding. I come down here and my team's going to get, you know what they're going to get? They're going to get to plant the bomb because the enemy team can't deny their plant because they're worried about me. So this is sort of the power of Viper on this map. You want to slow the enemy's rotations, put doubt in their mind to about whether or not you're potentially lurking and it can cause them to be unable to deny the plant. Shot. So here All Viper right. is not ready to deny an A plant so yeah, because she's looking for me. And I mean, she... F and so is Sova. Oh, there. And they find me and they kill me. But now we get the bomb down, so we win. Okay, so this is like the sub mini game, which can pretty much only be played by the smokes agent unless you have... Uh, if you're playing Harbor, then you can tell your Sentinel to do it and you'll have to throw Util for them. So, for example, Harbor. 30 seconds left. Three in the moment. Conflict is not my first choice, but that choice was Harbor made. can throw his cascade up mid and enable his Sentinel player to lurk. Like this, it denies window vision as well. It's very good. Or Viper can do it all herself. So if you're feeling like you enjoy this solo impact of playing this minigame, then opt to main Viper on the map. If you don't want to mess with that, you just want to push with your team, play Harbor. Uh, and Harbor additionally is going to allow you to plant the bomb a lot easier because um, you have this ability, which is why he's much better at going with his team. Going you can plant inside of this thing. Let's talk about how you hit the two bomb sites. Okay, so we talked plant denial. We've talked about the golden snitch. Let me look at my notes. I believe this is the last one. Okay, let's split the map in half and let's talk about hitting A site and then we'll talk about hitting B site. So you hit A site on this map. It's a battle of... It's like two battles is the war. Okay, so there's this battle and then there's this battle. Think of it like two little boxes, ice box, two boxes. And there's this nice split here by pipes that helps you remember that. Okay, we've got box one, we got box two. The way that the attackers will, the way that the defenders will successfully defend box two is by pressuring the attackers to use utility to take box one. Because A site's very hard to defend. If you've played ice box, you know what I'm talking about. If you just wait back here, and you defend a site you're going to have a huge problem dealing with the enemy team that's going to come over here they're going to sova drone then they're going to recon your back site they're going to send like viper mollies they're going to dash rain a flash or whatever they're going to use all their util in testing this box and it'll be too hard to hold so it's very common for the defenders to threaten aggressive pushes into box number one in some capacity so for example Duelist players will like to jump up pipes. Make sure you come into this corner and you can AD peek out this way. Take a fight and then fall back. And by threatening this fight, you're going to slow down the enemy team and you're going to make them consider utilizing their Sova Recon earlier. If they're not using their Sova Recon early, you can also threaten peeking this way immediately. Um, you'll also see pro players will like to jump up this way. Look at me. I suck. Felt too high for a second there. I like to jump up this way and fight belt. And you can see in the Cody Icebox VOD that I grabbed, if we look at pistol round again, I want you to see how we start by scaling A. You see how our gun is out and we're already aiming belt? The reason why we're doing this is because we're already expecting the enemy high radiant players to potentially aggress us here and take an early fight to pressure us into burning utility. Notice how we're not using any utility to take this front box control, which is great for us. But the enemy Phoenix Sabrosa punishes us. I've never pre-aimed that LL. Yeah, because you've also probably never faced a player who does this peak because it's scary. But you should be doing this peak because it's very good. So defenders, make sure, don't forget, if you're playing A site, you have to remember to pressure the enemy team into using their utility to take this first box. You have to do this. There's a million ways you can do that. Aggressive pushes are the most common, but even just like opping can force them to use util earlier. B site, we're going to talk solo queue right now, not pro play. In solo queue, the enemy team is rarely going to be capable of scaling yellow effectively. To scale yellow effectively, they need like a KO right dart that lands up here that you can't break or like a solid recon that lands behind you timed with somebody peeking you. Very rare, very rare. Because that's a threat in uh, tier two, tier one, then you will see them willingly take longer range engagements like this. However, it's not really a problem for us on Icebox in solo queue, even in like Radiant. 
So I would recommend a more passive yellow hold to hold B. And likewise for the attackers, I'd recommend you're very careful about how you peak yellow. This is going to be like the make or break of whether or not you hold or take B site. So on attack, I don't want to see you in your VODs just swinging yellow like this. I need to see you calling for some form of utility if you don't have that utility yourself. Some recon, some flash, some suppression, double swing, something. Because if you pressure yellow without strong utility, then you're failing the B like minigame on the hit. And likewise, if I see you defending on B, I don't want to see you peeking wide out and taking these dry duels. I'm down for you to play for like info, but then you fall back and you play really careful here. And you make sure you have a teammate right there. holding your back. Throw main and dart yellow. That can be good, yeah. But you gotta understand in solo queue, hey, where do the odds the enemy Sova has like a lineup dart for yellow? Like zero. Most of the time they're gonna throw the dart and it's gonna be right here and you'll shoot it. So this much should make sense. We're still just talking map macro and like slight agent deviations. And now we're gonna get into like which types of defensive styles make sense against this uh, attacker's like default. So Killjoy is the most meta sentinel on the map. It's not even close. You will see chambers. However, you're not going to see chamber as a Killjoy replacement. Double check it, please. Chamber will be a duelist replacement if you pick him. And I will explain why in a moment. Killjoy is going to be very straightforward on this map. You have like two setups. You have your A setup and you have your B setup. Your A setup is going to look like this. Put your turret here. That will spot them walking up tube. It'll spot them lurking up mid. So they can't do either of those. So now where do we put our alarm bot? Well, you either put it in their smoke, the start of the round, or you just put it like over here. Um, if you're playing A, I'd recommend you put it over here. If they're smoking mid at the start of the round. And that way they can't go under towards B. And now you'll just play some type of A setup. Make sure you keep your alarm bot on. Over here, you can break the dart for your teammates. You know what I'm talking about. Some mollies on site. It doesn't even matter. The mollies, you can honestly hold them to deny the plant, depending on where they're planting. But you're all about stopping the enemy seeker from winning the round for free. So this is sort of how you want to set up on A. Very important note. This turret seems like it accomplishes the same thing. Um, it seems like it would spot the mid walk up and window, but it doesn't. Um, you can test this in a custom. You can literally crouch past the turret just like that. It doesn't look like you can. It looks like it can see me. It, this turret cannot see me. You can go test this in a custom for yourself. It literally can't see me. So don't fall for this trap. This turret's no good, even though it looks like it gives you more flexibility to play on A site. All right. The other turret setup is over here. If you're playing B side, you specifically want to make sure it looks under tube and up tube. And now very similarly, start of the round, you can put your alarm bot like here alarm bot out. to watch them walking on mid. All right. There's also a variation on that A setup. I forgot to bot mention. If you set your turret up, turret up here and you want to play your alarm bot on A, this can be Calling fine. Out. You just have to co coordinate with your B players that one of them should be spotting under tube. And the best way for them to do that is for them to be up here. If they're up here holding the under tube walk, like from the smoke, then this is a free kill for them. Like every time. Alarm bot is inconsistent in the Viper smoke huge. Now, if you throw it willy nilly, I'm sure it could miss. Yeah, but like I'm going to put it on the front edge of your Viper smoke. And how are you going to get past it exactly? Like to be clear, I'm yoking all of this from tier two, tier one scrims. So I am highly confident there's not a gap in it. Seems fine to me. Just put it a bit in front of the in front of the orb, it seems like. Ooh, okay, you do have to be careful. Now the question is, can he always sneak past it? If he can always sneak past it, then it's bad, but there's no shot, right? You just have to be more careful. Ooh. Oh, no, I got him. Yeah, okay. You just have to know how to place it. It's fine. I'm pretty sure this is further in front. Like it's completely avoidable. If you're a Killjoy main, you can just ensure that it'll tag. Make sure you just place it in front of the orb. Off of Killjoy, quick Sage break. We're on Sentinels right now. So Sage mains, listen up, listen up, because you have one job. Sage mains, you're going to be planting the bomb almost always. And when you're planting B, you have to remember this. You need to learn how to throw the wall in this manner, such that it gives you enough room to stand over here. After you've placed it, 
to plant the bomb, whatever. And you can play over here in the post plant. This is your own Viper wall. Don't forget this play because Sage mains, you will not have many plays. <laughs> this is like bread and butter post plant. In one sec, I have a clip. Uh, I'm not just making this shit up. Okay, okay no look at the mini map. Forgive me for my poorly timestamped notes. Sage has planted the bomb. And I want you to notice the, the wall is the exact one I just talked about. And we're going to get to see where is Sage currently playing? Yoink. We're playing in this little rat corner. And you're going to notice that 1337 actually decides to break their own wall in front of the Sage. Okay, so they decide to give this line to further incentivize MBG to just walk through. Oh, uh, no. If I were Jay, I would know what they were aiming for here. Damn. Okay. They're pushing this up or maybe hiding. The you can see she just tucked again behind the wall. Left side. It's a very yeah, hard angle to clear. Regardless, all right? In the mid control there. Pyro may peek out and see it. One, three, three, seven. They've taken control not only of the site, but of the extremity. Boom. Boom. As well. Yep, just working for the right click. Wow, beautiful. Sage death. Sage death. All right, Sage veins, don't forget it. Over here in this corner, you call your Viper wall up. That's like one of your only cool plays on this whole map. Because at the end of the day, Sage is just planting the bomb. <laughs> okay, that's pretty much all of Sentinel covered. Killjoy, Sage, and uh, you will play Chamber sometimes. He's acceptable, but I would not pick him as a substitute for uh, Killjoy. So Sentinel players, honestly, these are your two options. Immortal and Up players, you can consider picking Chamber if you're a like a duelist main and you don't like playing duelist on the map and you pick him in addition to an existing killjoy and now chamber is going to get the same homework that all the duelists are about to get so way back in the day reyna was actually pretty meta on this map and it's not because of her like util or whatever but it's because movement duelists are not as necessary on icebox as every other map or like gap closing duelists and the reason why is because this map is just very friendly for people who have good movement, regardless of um, having movement abilities. You can get everywhere on this map just by moving around. See what I'm talking about? You can get everywhere. No problem. But that's the thing. I say no problem, but I know a lot of you duelist players who just watched me air strafing around and hopping can't do what I just did consistently. And so if you can't jump around like top screens, no problem. If you can't jump back rafters this way, no problem. If you can't do it off the box, no problem for no reason other than you just feel like it. Then you're not ready to play this map and you need to boot it up and practice your movement. Because at the end of the day, this the only reason these non movement duelists are OK on this map is because they can make all of these jumps already and all of these jumps are very important because it essentially enables you to play as if you're a movement duelist without movement abilities so you have to be able to hit these jumps you can never get the screens then you have to fix that make sure you're using the rope using the rope to get the screens is far more consistent you essentially grab and input a jump right after you grab the rope make sure you grab the rope after you've passed it and then you hold crouch all of this stuff needs to come naturally for you if you're playing non-movement duelist. And I'm going to pull up a VOD now, an ISO VOD on Icebox from somebody who has good movement. And there's lots of movement tech on this map. Lots of it. It's everywhere. Like there's even fall onto this box, jump, bunny hop over here to fight this way as you're scaling up. All sorts of movement tech. And if you can't perform clean movement like this, then you need to practice. This is like the duelist homework. If you want to play ISO on this map, if you want to play... Rain on this map, if you want to play even Neon in this map, uh, if you want to play Chamber on this map, then you have to be comfortable hitting these jumps. And notice how I got up to pipes there at full speed. Do you see how I did it? I came left. I came right. I came up here. I crouch buffered over that edge and then I came around and I had full speed. So there's a certain somebody who's been one tricking ISO recently. We need to go to yesterday. Bam! It's Cody! Everyone loves Cody. The highest RR peak of all time, 1,350. And current ISO one trick. What are the odds? Let's just watch how he manages without movement. It's 
So you already see the first peak I talked about. We die. Poth. Let's go next round. And Cody's a huge goofball when it comes to um how he plays. But you can't argue with 1300 uh, RR. Jumps onto the rope, comes across pipes. Jumps onto 410 without using the rope. Kills Viper. Do you see how he's effectively in the same position that a movement duelist could find themselves in? Like a movement duelist could have this verticality. And then he just jumped across over here and came up here and fought. Just like how a raise could satchel across. And then he jumped over to 410 like this without even using the rope because it's a bit faster. Just like how a raise could satchel across. So he's getting all of these good aggressive vertical fights without needing any utility that enables him to do it. We jump up here. We jump rafters. And you can see this movement is everywhere. If you're playing a non-movement duelist on this map, you have to be able to jump around like this. You have to be crazy. And knife him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here you go. You can start to see patterns in the routing, right? So even though Cody is a super goofball, there's a reason he can hit 1300 RR while being a super goofball. We can already see a pattern in his gameplay on this map. He routed belt. He jumped to pipes. He's going to jump 410. He's going to fight rafters. He's going to fight back gen. Like a robot. Jump to 410 screens you see so even though like at first glance he looks like a goofball who's just knifing people and whatnot it's very calculated he does like the same routing every round it's easy to study i highly recommend him so if you're considering iso watch how this guy plays iso on icebox and you need to learn to jump around like this it's it's not debatable you have to learn how to air strafe you have to be able to comfortably jump up jump around you have to be able to do this if you can't do this, then don't even think about playing non-movement duelist on this map. Don't even think about it. That's the quick ISO segment. We're going to talk about why he's good later, but I recommend Cody if you're trying to pick ISO. Would Ray's be better, though, for the minigame of Plant Denial? She can be, but so can ISO in different contexts. I'm going to explain. I'm trying to give you options for this one, Pen Flash, because there actually are options. I personally do favor the Ray's a bit. However, ISO is perfectly fine. ISO can throw his uh, vulnerable very easily at a potential planter to enable his teammates to peek. It's very easy for him to huck this thing at planters. It comes very naturally. So while it's not the same as a raise nade for plant denial, it's still decent. And additionally, unlike raise, ISO has good attacker side utility that fights against plant denial. So just like how initiators may pick Gecko over KO because they're not confident their teammates are going to pick these agents, duelist mains may favor playing ISO on this map over raise because he's more self-sufficient. In that if you have no KO and the enemy team has, let's say, like a Viper playing A or B. Well, the, the correct way to play ISO on this map is to orb farm either A or B. Making cover. Do like wall up scale here, grab the orb. Fall back or whatever. And when you get this ISO ultimate up, you can take that Viper off the map. You can take that Killjoy off the map for your teammates to flood yeah. out, try to plant the bomb. And it makes the enemy team's plant denial harder. It's similar to like a KO knife. Similar in, in um, execution. So it's a bit more self-sufficient in that even if you have a terrible team composition, ISO will have some independent tools. So we have Flash Initiator, Gecko and KO are your options. We have Sentinel, Killjoy, and Sage are your options. And we have the Duelist role, which is the most flexible, where you have ISO, you have Raze, you have Neon, you have Reyna. She's not even bad on this map, but I will not VOD review you playing her. Boom, boom, boom. These are like the best. And then I'm putting Chamber here in his own little side category for like Immortal and Up players. So the reason why Chamber is here in the Duelist role is because when you pick him, you're generally running a no Duelist comp. So it's going to be very rare. No Jet. Jet can go in here, but she's not the best. So I wouldn't put her in here. No. Like if we're talking about Split or something, this is going to be better. People will pick Jet. You can pick her, but I'd recommend you learn one of these guys. Recon Initiator, unfortunately, is just going to be Sova. We're going to talk about that. But it's just Sova. All right, let's talk about Sova. Sova is kind of the only recon initiator you can pick on this map and he's a must pick he is so good we're actually going to go into a lot of silver tech here um because he's that good he's just too good the fade is not an option as far as i'm concerned compared to sova the shock darts of course are just really easy to like play for plant denial way better than like a fade sees in this scenario 
and the recon is just um much more consistent because um there's a lot of verticality and so the fade dogs will struggle to clear it while a sova drone can clear it very effectively so for example you know maybe we're droning hey here and notice we can clear top chem we can clear top nest we can clear all of these like higher angles that a fade dog would struggle to clear because if somebody's playing up here or up here it's gonna be hard for us to tell with our fade dog while the fade dog might tag this guy we won't know if they're up or down and the drone is gonna get a lot stronger information additionally the silva darts are just there's a lot of good dice on this map so let's talk about some of them i'm just gonna try to sell you on silva scanning ahead scanning ahead there it is lightning round revealing area here yep standing ahead all right board call chat did who say fate is a no-go yes additionally um keep this in mind silver mains against the viper orb you need to recon the ground not the back wall if you recon the back wall these annoying viper players will throw this orb mid and they can run into it and beat your recon I'm doing lightning rounds showing off a bunch of Sova lineups and Sova mains. Ahead. You're going to have to go copy them all. Found them. Because there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Shock dart. Standing ahead. There they are. Revealing area. Revealing area. Standing ahead. Standing ahead. Found them. Revealing area. Revealing area. Plant the spike. Standing ahead. Revealing area. Um, um, um. Revealing area. There they are. Scanning ahead. Sova chucking all these would make me lose my mind. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shot that. Trick shot. It would take too long to explain how to line all of these up. So I'm just showing them all and you're going to have to go uh, copy. Um, I don't need to show kitchen shock. I guess I will. I mean, in what world are people Revealing still area. chamber tripping kitchen? Found them. But if they are, that's how you shock it. That's pretty much it for Silva tech. I need to show Viper tech as well. All right, let's start with the obscure Viper ones. Fine. Or oh yeah, highly recommend this guy's channel by the way. Siki is the goat. For B man, just the kitchen all is kind of tricky. Oh, it is Go on the left spot. here. Hey, there it is. Siki, my goat. Siki, my goat. I was so dizzy, dude. This is only good if you have like, um, you baited them all A, you canceled B, you plant top site. But then this shit's so broken. Like, look at it. <laughs> it's actually so annoying for the enemy team to play against this. Round here. In the middle there. 
comes across like this. Okay, so there's two Viper Orbs for your B defenders. There's the one way, and then there's the one over here for denying plant. Most of the time, this one way is going to be better if the enemy team can get the bomb down. So let's say you're playing like mid here. on Viper, and the enemy team is like taking B control pretty easily from your teammates. Or this is way better on the retake. Uh, this is a lot more annoying for the enemy team to deal with when you're retaking to defuse the bomb, because uh, the bomb's going to be spammable against the wall most of the time. And so having a smoke on it doesn't matter much. So this orb is going to be better if you find yourself in retake a lot. If you don't find yourself in retake a lot, like the enemy team doesn't have Sage, you know, Gecko or whatever, and they're struggling to um, even get the bomb down, then this orb will be better. It'll allow your yellow player to cross from yellow back to site, and it'll allow you to orb Molly the bomb when they go to plant. The Viper is very straightforward on defense. You throw this wall, you throw one of these two orbs, and you just... You play like anti-lurk. Consistent way to get it on the ledge in case you ever want to take orb. Yeah, so the way you throw the orb onto this is you basically take where you want it to land and aim up, draw this line out and just aim up above that. So let's say I want to get it right on the ledge. Then I would barely go on the ledge and aim up above. And so, bam. Easy. And frequently as Viper, you're going to be playing B. This type of thing. We're spotting early under here. You're going to want to watch pros. I'm mostly showing you the overall style of the map. Here's a bunch of Viper tech. Honestly, though, tech, I'm going lighter on the guide. So there's two Viper walls, and I actually have a clip. And then the eyes when you kill them. Okay. So the first Viper wall, Toxins there's multiple up. ways to throw this. You can find it in... Viper Icebox Guides. It allows you to cross here. And if thrown correctly, it'll cover all of top sight, all of default, all of snowman. Down. But you'll notice this Viper Wall is very deep. And so frequently, against Viper Walls like this, enemy ops Toxins will hold this up. position. Or they will hold this position. In front of your wall. Down. Which is why there's a second wall that you'll see players like Xander like to throw. In solo queue and it's kind of fielder's choice hard for me to line this up correctly without the barrier but look at the point across where it's much wider over here Toxins going up. Nah, i missed it let me spawn the barrier 30 seconds left Toxins going up. yeah and this will aim to explicitly deny those operator angles Boom, boom. This guy will not have nearly as much wiggle room to jiggle. And this guy up here won't have this option because of this thing. They'll have to play more passive over here. Which is much easier to deal with. Okay, the Harbor A wall. I do have to point this out because uh, people get this wrong a lot. Oh god, I think I got it wrong. Speaking of people getting it wrong a lot, who just one of them? Oh! So you need to get it on the screens. Ideally more on the right left. There. And you want to curve it so it doesn't right come up rafters lower this will take some practice let me see if i can get one i don't play harbor on this map Water rising. maybe yes yes this is what the wall should look like you see how he can't really come through that and you have to be ready of course to shoot up here when the wall drops the rest of the wall needs to be lower on the ground let me just show that lower like this Why not block off rafters? It is blocked off. Yeah, the reason why you want it lower like that is it actually makes it very awkward for these people back here to move around. Uh, if you set it too far back, then they can actually play like high lows on you. So a common defensive pattern is like one defender will swing out rafters while the other one swings out lower. And this wall that's way up here will avoid that pattern from happening. If you throw the wall too far back on accident, like up against these screens it, it can get finicky pretty fast like even over like here they can walk in front of it and high low so if you ensure that your wall is completely in front of rafters then they can't possibly walk in front of this from on top of rafters if that makes sense i don't see anything they will see 410 and pipes and like nest here that's about it all right and look at that reinforcement as well oh she's up there this exactly round where they okay like to plant that spike and they don't usually clear that utility there. 
So that could be really annoying for 1-3-3-7 three, three, if they do engage onto B. And while a lot of room being taken by Zeke, I think that's ample information to at least get yourself set up to be a little bit more B defensive. Take notes, chat. Here we go. So here you see they're throwing that deeper wall I talked about. And so they're playing these two defensive positions with the op top side. Mm. But this is actually, it's that's unrelated to what I'm about to show you. Trying to hold on an off angle, but nobody knows where Zeke is. They go up the I want you to specifically see, <laughs> this is crazy tech. I apologize to M uh, 1337 that I'm leaking this. But I mean, you did it in a tournament, so you knew it was coming. So the Reyna is holding up there for this guy. He's going to peek like this. Okay. Holding this guy. Bam. You see? They're holding like right here. They've basically got the dead on crosshair. Uh, I think she's... Yeah, she's crouched. It doesn't matter. Okay. I want you to see where my right hand gun model is, though. <laughs> and I want you to see what 1337 does. Notice fireball is silent jump spotting. Now, Reyna, Zeke spotted it. Zeke got good timing. But they are doing a silent jump spot like this. <laughs> right there. I just spotted their head for free. And the right hand gun model wouldn't see it. <laughs> and I just thought that that was sick. I just thought that, that was sick. I wanted to show that. And now that you know that, all you have to do, chat, when you're holding this while crouched, just ADS. You don't even need left hand gun model, just ADS. And notice now I can see everything. No more cheeky silent jump spot. <laughs> Isn't that crazy though? Isn't that crazy? When I saw that, I was losing my mind. But now that I'm ADS, I dare send a card to jump spot. Oh, I actually just saw him barely. It's still tough. Anyways, that's one method that 1337 took here to scale into box one without using utility. Does that make sense? Because um, there's these two boxes. Zeke has gotten this crazy aggressive angle to try and force 1337 to either get killed or have to use utility to clear him out. But instead, he just come over here and you can just spot it like that. And you can do this in solo queue, spotting this angle this way. Do you know how to do a silent jump chat? You hold crouch. You jump, let go of crouch, and now hold shift. So you just switch from crouch to shift. And now we're going to rewind and we're just going to watch. I'm hoping that you can all see all the patterns now. We're just going to watch these teams play a bit of Icebox. Because now you know the mini games. You're all professional heckin' Valorant players now. Everyone get your notebooks out. It's pop quiz time. Pop quiz time. Let's just look at the B setup. From MBG, they've thrown a Viper wall. Do you notice anything about it? Because there's two types of Viper walls on Icebox when hitting B. Yes, they've they've thrown a shallow Viper wall, Pimi, not deep. You can tell if it intersects this close corner. They're throwing it shallow. We drone close angles. What are we going to do about yellow? Zeke does a little jump spot. Look at that. There's this threat of the guy playing default. And look what MBG just did. They're aware that Chamber might play there to take a shot. And so we have a heckin' shock dart lineup to get free damage on that guy. Also, we'll break mollies. Clear yellow with recon that lands behind them. You see that? Watch again. Don't dry peak yellow when you're pushing B. Recon's landing there. And now, as the recon scanning, Reyna swings yellow. Here we have the Seekers. You have that lineup? Yeah, I showed it. I showed a variant. There's a million ways to throw it. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> this map is so dumb. As you keep in mind that one through three seven here are on full eco. Like this is their bonus.
All right. Why did we get the bomb down? Only working to the best of their advantage. Why do we commit to this plan? Out, uh, unluckily enough, not actually being. Why do we commit? Everybody figure out. Complicated. Viper spotted on A. Yup. And Sova's droning. Sova starts droning. Viper's been seen A. And we shocked any potential Killjoy mollies. So the only threat now is if Killjoy throws a molly and activates it. So what's our Sova doing? Able to take He's playing close. He's playing close to Viper by the ground. Shot and cheap. Suffering ever so slightly, but so many players down. I'm down. It's actually two pretty important players of the round as well. It's not going to be easy to take this site back, though. We're still going to lose. No, and Zeke goes down unfortunately, as well. we lost too many lives getting the bomb down. Right now, one through through seven, all five members still remain. And already, it's just down to one J. Cruel. You think the post play And you know why we lost chat? Because Harry Potter caught the golden so snitch. So and so the rest so of the round. Noise, it's the same pacing as before. Didn't matter. <laughs> Icebox is such an annoying map chat, and I hope this guy's gonna make you hate it, probably. Because it's such a linear map. You just like five stack push shit and you pray that you have a good lurker. To increase their pace a little bit. They've been playing it very slow, but that's kind of exactly what 1337 wants. But I like this though. There's again, there's a lot of heavy mid control being taken. Oh, even if it's not deja really vu. If you recall last round, Jay actually used um, a killjoy turret right here to spot this. What are we doing to, on A? We're pushing up to make them burn utility, but instead, you know, it's rounds over. So the worst thing you can do on this map on defense is play some really passive position where your teammates will get to take these early fights. Does that make sense in solo queue? Because like imagine in solo queue that you're like this viper right now. Now you're just like watching your teammates play the round. And the outcome is not in your hands at all. That makes sense. So like if I'm Viper here, I want to be either aggressively positioned mid to play with Killjoy, aggressively positioned B, or like breaking a dart from my dude on A and pushing with them. Something aggressive. And so you can see that's going to be one through three seven. They have to adjust their defensive style now to account for Up top yellow. being open. Bad. And you can tell that means that one of these the sites is going to have to be a little bit more abandoned. Why are we droning? The enemy team has burned a bunch of utility to cross mid. So that way Draco Malfoy can get up tube. And so Pyro is checking for that. And that is going to be a site, which is perfect for Nightblood Gaming. Now they can great. nice yeah. and easily walk in. Does not catch them. Yeah, they're not actually anticipating anything coming through. They're aware. Either. Uh, Bam, who's going to win this round, chat? Who's going to win this round? Statistically. Now, obviously, it's a first blood. So like you would guess the team that got the first blood. But it's a way more bigger predictor Such. on this map. Right, Zeke gonna be leading the way. Because now look, where's Sova? Not denying the plant. Ready to go, by the way. Where's Viper? So she's she's looking mid side. Faster, call. Now we're gonna run out. We're gonna get that bomb down. down. Hopefully, Sova's Which doing these good. spins, Again, checking pacing. his back, checking his now back. Plant that shit. Sort of Kill that Sova. You see, just denying their plant denial. Following through, Katashio doing a great job as the duel is to really Bam. clear things up. MBG gets a probably like flawless conversion at this point. Oh, said. well. Find a uh, uh, that exit frag angle's OP. At least able to flush that operator out and look at this actually. One through through seven. They bring their members over to reinforce. <laughs> this is so cringe. Okay. So recall last round. Oh, uh, no, two rounds ago. Where Chamber killed our Killjoy pushing A. Chamber got this kill. If you've ever been this Chamber and you've peeked lower and see nothing, and you hear B in mid-noise, what do you do? Well, you'll frequently flank. You'll do this a lot. Right? You'll clear like this, you'll clear like that, and then you'll be like, okay, time to go. Well, what's our Killjoy doing? She has an yeah. alarm bot right here, and she's tucked <laughs> here to swing off of it. She's just waiting. And while in a Tier 2 Pro game, this isn't going to work as much, in solo queue, identifying this defender who pushes and playing this way you'll be the best seeker in the goddamn world this type of really really sites. really cringe yeah, slow play is acceptable me, when you are the seeker on icebox your only job as the seeker is to kill one you kill one if you kill one and you stay alive for like a little bit of time you're chilling so that means that the defense is going to get ready for this one but actually might have all just been an elaborate ruse break potential mollies but notice notice fireball is not even placing his mollies yet because he knows that they like to shock or pre-shock them. 
Yeah, and they can pick another one off too. Uh, biggest issue is where's that gonna happen? Already Hunter's Fury trying to knock these players back. I'll show you that Viper ult. This Viper ult's only good if you've already planted. Come to this corner and just throw it. And you'll notice that it's gonna come right out here and stop. And as long as your bomb is planted like this, the enemy team will have to come inside this to defuse. And it's really annoying, really annoying for them because they're going to come down to one HP against a plant that's planted against a wall. So it's spammable. Say through the Viper ult. Ooh, ooh. Fall down. That's the ult she's throwing right here. And any you can see. Possibility of taking down that Viper spit gone. Now they kind of got to work their way inside. Oh my goodness. Jay with a flank is beautiful. They're not paying any mind or attention. To what's you see, they go to tap and we just spam that wall. And we know they're not on. Going on back there. The fusel slowly working its way forward. But Shock Dart's not going to do too much. It's scary. I mean, J Crew left alone. Haven't actually caught the flank just yet. Jay taking their sweet time. Yeah, and this might have been the biggest mistake. Not fighting. Oh, we missed. Now missing out Jay. with as well. Hey, we got one on A. Let's try A again. And uh, looks like this time they might be moving a little bit faster. Okay. The, this sofa dart is a bit fancy, and I'm going to explain. There's a lot of nuance. I'm going to try to break it down by watching this VOD. So he threw it really deep Standing ahead. on this wall. And that can be good and bad. The reason why it could be bad is somebody pushing up can come here and not get revealed. Okay. The reason why it can be good is when it lands this deep, the maze player cannot break it. As long as you're aware of the trade-offs that you're making, you're chilling. Our A-like lurker has determined it's very unlikely that they're going to push up in this manner, but I wouldn't be surprised if Excite pulls his gun out. Yeah. Do you have a bit of a scattered buy though, Gompers? You see? And we're clearing close. And we're droning close. You see that? See how nobody has peaked this close angle yet? This Viper hasn't peaked it. This whole team hasn't peaked it. And we're droning it because we know the weakness of this dart. All right. Notepad. Are you guys ready for the manifesto? Write this on a sticky note. Read it every pre-round on Icebox. Defense. Try to get an op. Make them use util early on A. Hits. Do, do, do. Play yellow. Notice yellow. Op. Pressuring them to use util early on the A hit. Like this is it this is true for whatever agent you're playing if you're playing viper ask your jet if she wants to op if she doesn't buy one if you're playing killjoy and your team doesn't aggress a early say hey jet you want to peek pipes i'll break your dart you got it you're playing in iso and you want to go yellow hey viper can you give me an orb here i'm gonna play yellow and i want to call that orb off so i can get out if they're pushing me you can apply these concepts to whatever role an agent you're playing okay try to bait out plant denial utility without dying to it identify site holds that have weak plant denial potential be greedy about using early utility this is solo queue disrespect them a bit but now you're sticking out this is the whole map we're going to do tier three in houses on icebox and i'm going to make sure that we have people who play each role on each team we're getting prac games in right now we're doing vod review right after the match you all need to be giga sweating, by the way. We're doing VOD review right after this game. I, mean, I will be VOD reviewing your Icebox gameplay. So keep that in mind. Got our Sova's locked in. We got our Killjoys hovered. Then we have some flexibility. It looks like we might have Harbor vs. Viper and KO vs. Gecko, which would be fascinating. Because that would mean we have both sides of the coin where we have the more favorable, like, professional combination. And then we have, honestly, in my opinion, the more favorable solo queue combination. Revealing area. Off to a bad start. Harbor wall is good. Harbor wall is good. Yeah. Uh... It's a good gecko plant. It's a terrible harbor. Spike planted. Cove. Look at our post plant conversion here from team Woodrow. Laundry guys should want to fall back. Ooh, we've got some lurker contact here. Dirt and Neon Javier. Ooh, Dirt and Diff! 
Uh oh. Woodrow not covering his teammates back. Doesn't matter though, because this bomb plant's really good for us. It does matter quite a bit. Ooh, I like the mid pressure. I'm not sure about the shorty. Now, here's the problem. They're going to get spotted by that turret. This turret's OP, man. You see? You can no longer just lurk up tube like this. No world. No more. Oh, Street is a savior! Okay. I mean, we're going to get the bomb down. Dune Appreciator's got a good angle here. Ooh, gets traded. One enemy remaining. Honestly, respectable attempt. So what you want to do on those rounds, chat, is your Viper wants to orb boiler. Because, um, or well, I guess Harbor would have to cove boiler. But you want to uh, block the turrets LOS through this window. Yeah, Javier playing very patient. He's going to hear those A players. I wonder if he's going to be able to get a kill here. Oh, he's got a Vandal. He's getting pinched. Yeah, that's tough. Oh, no. Darthan, you have to shoot it. Selmir, great kill. The, the wingman plant is in the wrong spot. That is so wide. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got some of the right ideas here from the attacking team this round. Last player standing. That, that. We fake a presence. I like that. The street has an op. Street has an op. I love this from him. Where's our turret? Did they break it? Oh yeah, monster on the loose. Ooh, they did break it. Laundry guy got up. Oh my goodness, laundry guy versus laundry guy. You have to kill those laundry guy. You can't be doing that. Selmir has got great positioning in these uh, free plays. Yeah, open it up. Fight that up. You're practically full health against him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Grab that up. Grab that up. Selmir, Bogdan's Law. Bogdan's Law. Oh, we got the ISO vulnerable bug. 30 seconds left. We forgot Bogdan's law. Bro, an op here would have been huge. Sell me, are you fool? Even I know Bogdan's right law, and I've never even played left. Counter Strike. Boom! I need to now Google Bogdan's law. The if you're low HP. And you have the opportunity to take an operator, always take it. Does that make sense? Because the operator equalizes the game. Now you both need to hit one body shot on each other. It's still worse for you, of course, because you're 30 HP, but the op is way better. The lower HP you have, better the op is. And Bogdan's Law states that the lowest HP player on the team should have the op. But that, of course, does not apply as linearly in Valorant, where agents have different abilities. But that's the idea. Honestly, this defensive hold from Team Street is perfect. It's perfect. They, their B is the weakest site right now, but they have an op. An ISO op with ultimate op is so good. One suppressed. My ult's ready. Love that A orb farm because our A is so strong. Love this from Durthan, by the way. This angle combined with that one kills right turret. Who taught him that? He's brilliant. You should run. Great attacker ult. Great counter ult. 
Ooh, I fuck with the cancel. Oh! Whoa! Two detained for both sides? Uh oh. No! Neon Obvia! Ah! It doesn't matter! It probably doesn't matter, so. Spike planted. But ouch. Ah. Flash. Get the flash. Water rising. Hunter guys mid. Oh great, Iso ult. Oh, they weren't able to pull it through. It's, they didn't pop KO ult. Last player standing. That cost them the round. That cost them the round. Watch this. The ISO ult is great. And if their KO pops ult now on the push, they, they win this. They win this round. But Team Street was not willing to fully commit. And so Team Woodrow was able to consume a bunch of utility. There's a Harbor Cascade. And you see they were able to split things up. You have to do yeah. things as a team, Team Street. Ooh, I do not like throwing that dart. Team Street has not been playing those angles. I don't like throwing that flash either. Because look at foot. Patient as a bee. We should be backed up a bit. We're angling ourselves right now. In a way that I don't appreciate. We thought I was going to hear them. This is huge. Not huge if you're that mechanically Another deficient, here. Durathon. Don't forget to practice your mechs. Oh, yeah. Monster on the loose. Placing swamp grenade. Swamp grenade out. The panic is because he didn't trust his gunfights. He started to pull out his orb. And now we're in trouble. Look at that lurk from Laundry Guy. Beautiful. Okay, a bit unnecessary, but you know what? I fuck with it. Last player standing. Spike planted. You want more? Here's more. Oh nah. Nah, that's cruel. Macro-wise, they're both playing really well. There's some errors in the individual utility usage that we have to talk about. But ultimately, I'm seeing a lot of... is mostly mechanical errors right now, which is good, because that's pretty easy to fix. Let's see what street has got. Ooh, I don't like peeking this way on pipes. We'll talk about that. And we'll talk about that. Can hop in the comms? Yes. We will go spike. into attacker's comms. We're going into attacker-sided comms, chat. Team Woodrow. All right, we should only spectate the team Wait, that drum, we're drum. listening to. Oh, this is bad. Break it. They're Odin. <laughs> They're using an Ares down mid. Go check out one. Oh, be yellow. Wait, we can't, can we just kill him? Yeah, he's... Wow. He's stunned. Flash, flash, flash. Yeah! Pushing out yeah, clear it with the flash! I'm pushing out A. Careful. What the hell's... All right, time for the Woodrow. Dude, this uh, wingman is so hard to use. Failed wingman. Yeah, guys. Yeah, I, I have a ball. I have a ball. Let's play off. Let's play off. Spike planted. Sure. I have a ball. Down the door. <laughs> Bad plan. I got one two. orange. Two orange. Two. Oh, you have two. Oh, yeah, you got two. You got two. Okay, just two. Oh, at least saw me. No, there was one. Two orange. It's okay. Hey, we have a, a bunch. I got. I got oh, all four. I, 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 I can ping. I can ping. Shit, I can't. I can't hold that. All ping now. They're, they tap. They look yeah, they're on it probably. No, 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 Defense uh, can you do the same flash mid? I'm gonna try to push out. Alright, yeah, I got you. This time I'm not gonna scuff uh, it up. I'm, this is a scuffed by actually. Oh. They harbor walled. 
Call for a wall. Nice. Okay. Do the for A. Top. I think B long. Nice. Harbor ball A. Nice. Lost mid, lost mid, more mid. Yep, I can flash mm -hmm. again. Flashing high. Yeah, flash, flash, flash. Two more mid. One enemy remaining. Ooh. Last one, no. Get these guns. I don't see anything long yet. Not close, right? He could be oh like a or something. Himself. This is a free round win because we'll he just used ISO ult. Do we have bomb? Or? No, he no, has it, right? Yeah. He's got it. We can play retake for it. 5v, yeah. whatever is fine. You hold ISO ult to the 1v2. Like, you can you help me get this vertical real quick. Yeah. Planning, Planning A. Uh, Planning yeah. A. We'll be the link now. Let's go build bubble. Uh, I'm a drone, I'm a drone. Backside. He's hit backside. 40. He's hit 40. I'm going to ult him. One of you guys go to stick it. All right. Work your way up close safely. We gotta stick it. Holding towards heaven. Got him. Did you get him? All right, yep. you stick. I'm gonna find this nerd. Found him. <laughs> yup. Yeah. Nice job. That's the ISO guarantee right there. <laughs> Team Woodrow up. Seven five. They bring it back. Okay, laundry guy playing yellow is interesting. I find Harbor's more effective at fighting for A space. Uh oh. Tell me your falls. We cancel. Look at the mini map. IGL Masterclass from Team Street. Boom. Uh-oh. That's one. That's crazy. Okay, they should just all fall back play post plan here. Nothing to do, nothing to do. Great round for the attack. Look at this harbor cascade. Okay, laundry guy, play your off angle. Yes. Well, don't swing. Oh. Oh. Spike planted. We got his. Bro, this ISO noise. Shock down. Die. Okay. All right, we know it's an op, so we should not peek. And we should just win. <laughs> Get out of there. Love this angle from Selmir. Does he hit the shot, though? Because I think he will get to take one. Oh, drop a bit early. Although the recon's really good. Ooh. Street trying to give a new definition to the term streetment. Laying Selmir out. Welcome to my world. Uh, very questionable Viper's Pit. In fact, I don't believe it covers the bomb. That's as far as she goes. Okay, Woodrow. Put wingman on that thing. Put wingman on that thing. Get him, wingman. Get him, wingman? This guy's never played Gecko in his life. They played it there? Ooh, we're running into this play again. The 
drone didn't clear it. Morale. Well, that's even worse! Woodrow, what a shot! There's an angle I need to show Woodrow. Angle I need to show Woodrow. This game is very useful for me recognizing lapses in the way that I have taught Icebox today. Kill. Oh. Oof. Great kill from Selmir. Terrible shot from Street. Great kill from Orangers. Neon has to deny this plant. Oh, Press his reload! Uh oh. Spike planted. What, what is that what timing? Is I'm out of here. Boom! Nobody's looking top sight. Selmir from downtown. Too slow ahead. on that recon, but that will work. We have to be wary of tube. We are wary of tube. Very wary of tube. Enemy yep. Down. You should run. Okay, Darthan, I see your routing. Oh, okay, okay, Darthan, uh, I see your routing. <laughs> Spike down A. Shot that. Bit too high for that one. Spike planted. One Intro. enemy remaining. Revealing. Likely GG here. Standing ahead. Wizro figured it out. He figured out how to get Wingman on that bomb. GG. All right, gamers, we gotta talk. We gotta talk. Because while I saw some good ice box, I also saw some bad ice box. We missed a lot of opportunities to use another utility day, and play battle. some angles that we were unaware so of. Okay, so first of all, Woodrow has to learn how to plant the bomb with Gecko because this is unacceptable. It gives you a little indicator of where it's going to get planted. And notice your crosshair has to be like on the site. So if you want to plant it close, you have to actually, you can see it's kind of finicky, but that's where you need it. You need it up against this like thing you were playing out in the open frequently like a maniac it basically puts the bomb a bit over your crosshair and your crosshair has to be on the bomb site you can't see the indicator if there's a smoke yeah that's fine it sounds like you have to practice it in a custom withdrawal uh additionally there was a plant top a site that you guys are getting wrong How, had harbor cove so i was trying to plant open no you don't even want to do that planting against this wall is the best plan <laughs> <laughs> right here uh because it's super spammable in the post plant um planting in this right corner there. can be good too okay this top site plant whenever you're doing it chat you want to come out to like the edge here and you face outwards you're gonna see in the vod somebody did this plant and the enemy team was able to defuse right here undercover and that's unacceptable unacceptable you want it way out okay, let's watch okay. the vod do an appreciator learn how to use your goddamn util this looks lined up wrong. I called that this lineup was wrong. And it was. <laughs> also, street is aggressing pipes wrong. I like... I like what everyone's doing. I don't like how we're doing it. So I love the recon, if it actually worked. I love fighting pipes, except when you fight pipe street. Remember into this corner AD and away I saw multiple people peeking pipes like this disgusting terrible don't do this you come right up into this corner AD is good. Wall is good. I like Selmir's movement here Good gecko plant. Okay. Laundry guy, what the fuck is this? This makes no sense. Good gecko plant. Oh, we're going we're about to misplay post plant hard. So we're getting the bomb down. 
We have numbers advantage for Team Woodrow, and we have late mid lurker. But now I believe you guys just proceed to give a series of duels. It's a terrible harbor. What happened here? What? Dune Appreciator. Yeah, they just peaked screens for no reason. Where are we? Yeah. What are you doing, Dune Appreciator? Like, nice kill, I guess, but you're not playing with anybody. Who are you with? Who's your buddy? Laundry guy is playing over here, and now Woodrow is gigabating his ass. Play with each other! Good for us. And we lose. Oh, yeah, and what? Dirthan. Dirthan. Yeah, you're lucky. Stone. You know why you're lucky? Like that, with this shitty wall, if Woodrow had come belt, Woodrow would be chilling. You gotta... You gotta throw this wall, Dirthan. You have to make sure that the wall has a little piece here. You see how it's blocking? All of this? Look at your wall again. See how your wall just drops down and my wall stands up? You have to learn how to throw this. There it is. You got it? There's your lineup. Yeah, and now you, your positioning is all off. It's all off. Like, Dirthan ends up being super late to playing B. So in solo queue, Dirthan, you're frequently going to have to play in this area and in this area. And in order for you to be able to play in this area, you have to know how to throw your orb up there from over here so that you can stay in this region. You have to know this. This is too slow. You're going to see by the time you get this orb thrown, the round is starting and you can no longer fight for mid at all. So now you're the B player. Which isn't necessarily bad, but it restricts your options. Like, look how... Like, look, you are deciding to go back to site, and you're so slow. I like the mid pressure. Okay, this was good. I liked this. But you guys forgot about this turret. You forgot about it. So, if you're playing Viper on this map, you can learn an orb for Boiler. For these, these um, cheese rounds. You can just learn... Is it just like... Is it just here? Beast. Poison you you can learn an orb like this to block the Killjoy turret. Poison's off. And you use a wall like this. Toxins going up. And then you can like cross. Toxin screen down. And then you can orb. Poison's off. Now it's going to telegraph it. But like you could throw this util and then here. go B or something, right? Like if you think that this is going to telegraph it too hard. Um, Harbor, however, should just use second cascade. Second cascade. So we use first cascade. Team scales up mid. And now we're here. Second cascade. Keep going. Keep going. I like the cascade mid into the Killjoy Lurk. However, I don't like it this round, Neon Javier. You are on buy. They are on bonus. Uh, I would not sanction you pushing up without having an A player as well. So I'm down for 3-1-1 in this configuration, where like one of you plays over here, probably you, Neon Avier, with your alarm bot. You remember this setup from our tier two game we reviewed? And then have Harbor control your mid, so that way you have some insurance and you guys can double up and defend each other's guns. Because you'll see what happens is you get into this position where if the enemy team actually played this well, you could you could die for free here, which would be terrible. And also Arsova, Another mistake from... Who is this? Dune? Dune, it's 4v2. I would never use my recon here. I would hold it for a potential defuse. Note that they don't have a smoke. Dune, appreciate it. This is huge. Now, if they do have a smoke, I would use this recon. Revealing area. Which will land on the bomb. So, even if they smoke off the bomb, this will reveal them defusing. But because they don't have smokes, I'm just chilling here holding this line up. And when they tap, I just throw ahead. this and I hop up. It start lands up there. It, it, it's like a free conversion. The street has an op. Street has an op. I love this. You gave up way too much space here, Street. And I, I comment on it. Like you took one shot and that was... And then you're like, well, no thanks. And you're gone. Bro. You saw Sova. Sova's not a lurker. So you take this shot, fall back, throw this Making at them. Cover. And come back out. This wall is really good for this um, because essentially Stopping fire. You're, you're not peeking anything now. 
and they're just going to appear through that wall. So the wall allows you to come back out. It's, it's like a jet smoke. Yeah, and you can see I'm giving you guys props. This setup is pretty much perfect. The 3A, because we have this uh, B hold with the ob, this is perfect. The attackers can't do much about this. They're like fossilized. So they have to push A or the op. Who taught them that? It's brilliant. The problem is our A hold is um, terrible. I don't know what happens, but we end up just getting an untraded death, which is no good. As Sova personally on the A hold, I has foot. I'm rarely going to be there, but when I'm like A like this, if we're not aggressing up, which we're not here, I'm going to be playing in this area and waiting for the dudes to come out. And when the dudes are coming out, I'm going to throw this recon and then I'm going to peek out high low with my dudes. And you'll see this recon is going to scan all of them in the back as you peek out to fight. You don't want to just give them dry aim duels. There's no reason to do that. We have an alarm bot. We have mollies. In fact, we're even playing like counter killjoy ult this round. So giving them this fight is no good. You give them a dry 50. You see? I has foot. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is also the round that I was very unhappy with how Street played. So Street, I get it. You have ISO ultimate. And so you sort of want to play for a retake and with your team. But when you're this like B player and the enemy team is killjoy ulting A, that's their lurker right because look at their comp they don't have another lurker because they have harbor and they have initiator initiator duelist you're following me so far so their killjoy's location is their lurker's location we know there are other people a already it means the moment that killjoy ult gets dropped right here uh, i mean i'm pretty sure killjoy yeah killjoy's been seen earlier actually she got a kill it is time to knife out on this flank and go control all of this space and do you see what happens because you don't do that here comes neon javier here he comes mid and here he comes winning the round so you were a bit too concerned about your ultimate this round that you were blind to the fact that they were all certainly a and you were the edge of the chain so you had the obligation to push out um you could have even run mid this way to do it this round made me so mad because this iso ultimate was perfect and now we need to immediately pop ko ult am i crazy oranges what are we doing what are we doing? Our teammate captured them. We have the bomb. We've caught them off guard. Shouldn't we now pop KO ult because we're playing to win the round? But you don't do that and look what happens. Now Harbor gets to put his cascade up. He wouldn't have been able to do this. All of a sudden, getting this trade onto Woodrow, which should have been trivial, is impossible. Orange is monkey together strong. I don't care if you think street burning ultimate is bad because you're on eco or whatever. Two people doing a bad thing is better than one people doing a bad thing and one people doing a good thing. Hey, can, can we just kill him? Yeah, he's okay, I has foot. If you stand right in that angle, you'll get oh, infinite. A lot of you miss this angle, but you just play right here and don't move. It's hard to do this. It feels uncomfortable, but especially if you've already gotten one, go for this gamble. Trust me. Watch. We're going to watch a lot of rounds where the yellow player makes this mistake and just pretend that they do what I suggest. Let's pretend for a moment. So first of all, you wouldn't have gotten flashed. Yeah, yeah clear with the flash. Second of all, look how all of these people just cleared that angle with util in hand. Like if we had a second guy here right, right now, like our Viper, then Woodrow would die. With the flash. Woodrow and like you guys are both dead. You see this to that angle I just talked about. Nobody respects that angle. Okay, okay, let's talk about this defense. So our team composition is worse for defense. Agreed, Team Woodrow? Because we have Harbor and Gecko. It's a bit weird. Harbor does not belong here. Let's talk about this. So Sova should be mid. Neon should be A with Gecko and Harbor. <laughs> and then Killjoy should be a B anchor. So let me let me draw that for you real quick. Let, let's uh Sova should be in this mid area where you can collect recon and play fast rotate. Very common. Killjoy should be playing over B, which means she would use like this alarm bot and the kitchen turret type thing to play in this area. We could even play a turret closer to us. It's fine. We have silver mid. And then we want neon gecko harbor because harbor is not viper. Harbor is not viper. Harbor is like a controller who loves playing with his teammates. He's not a lurker. He's not a lone wolf. Gecko is very similar. He's a support that really benefits from playing with his teammates. Sova, however, can support his teammates from afar especially on this map especially on this map so sova frequently plays mid on this map standing ahead playing recon here playing recon here like the sova's play this way all the time or they come up this way 
Recon here. Recon here. You get what I'm saying. So does love playing this style. And of course, we can also assist B. They say it's B rush. We can throw recon for B. No problem. So Sova wants to be in the middle area. And then it should the rest should make sense. Killjoy is the anchor. And these three is the hit squad that can fight for early A. Because they, they pair very well together. That's the bot. And look, like this round, you kind of accidentally do it. You see how this round we have Killjoy going towards the B anchor. We've got the three man hit squad here. And now, yeah, we also have Silva with them. But it's because it's eco. Silva would have just been right here. But watch. Now, all of a sudden, we're far more capable of pushing. The Gecko Flash, the Neon Stun, it all pairs so well together. Hey, we Harbor Cascade. Fuck with this Harbor Cascade. I like this B hit. Oh, Laundry Guy, I love this angle from you. I love that you kept playing it even though you're vulnerable because it's that good. I love this kill. But now, Laundry Guy. You have two options, and you took an option that I don't justify. I guess you have three options. Third option is like the pro player play, which is kind of hard. Should have flashed yellow there. Oh, yes, you should have. We should not be dry peeking yellow. Correct, oranges. This is a mistake. But. Okay. Option one. Come over here, play this angle, and uh, beg your team to come and support you or whatever. And just gamble one of the sides. I don't care which side. Option number two. Move a little bit to your left and keep holding. Option number three, and this is like the pro option, is you have to pre-fire little jiggles like this because the enemy team is going to be holding you and they're going to be ready for you. And if you peek, you will die. But you might be able to get another if you do this and you might just get a kill. But you'll see, you, you peek out wide and you're dead. Yeah, I don't like using this with no info, Street. Is this... You, you do this pretty often in this game. Also, frequently, off this ISO alt, if you haven't taken space, you're going to notice this pattern. You haven't played much ISO. But after you get this pick, if you haven't already taken sight and you're not planting yet, I want you to get in the habit of always canceling the hit, Street. So whenever you get an advantage like this off your ult, but you're not planting yet, I want you to always just go... Yo, go away! Go away! Turn around! Just watch. Every, it's going to happen multiple times this VOD. Off this ISO world, the enemy team will always, always come crashing over because your teammates need support. This guy getting ulted is screaming in VC. Because at minimum, it's 4v4 after your ult on average. And But they're all going to come crashing into this side of the map. You just have to be wary of like the deep lurks. I really would have liked Street this round if um, our Killjoy was alarm bot and standing right here. Because you anticipate the desire to cancel the hit okay so off of iso ultimate your team goes crashing through and if you don't get control of sight like this you just call the cancel back and your killjoy is holding all of this so you're chilling common themes lurking on gun advantage happened probably 10 times this game not flanking out be long on defense poor utility execution to be expected but if you play Sova slash Viper slash Echo slash KO, you really got to hit the customs. Clean this up to be my impact. Swinging fights when holding tricky angles is better, even though it's scarier. You're all, all of you guys are all hesitant to hold angles when they expose you to another threat. This is a common theme. This angle can be scary because they can come from behind you. Agreed? And so you want to peek. Because you want to make the fight happen. For sure. That's why it's scary. Holding here after you kill one can be scary because they can come right from here. behind you. So you want to peek. You got me? Not enough tricky shotgun holds on eco defense. I am not playing with team in post plant use denial See, these are the common themes a lot of the time in post plant we would take these fights when we don't need to we would throw our recon Revealing area. we didn't need to like we deep way deep where we could be playing for post plant but vice versa is true as well remember woodrow oranges all the initiator players monkey together strong 
Woodrow, you can't watch your teammate right here. get crossfired just because you're playing post plant. You have to play with your teammates. Oranges, you can't watch your teammates burn their ultimates on an eco push and hold your ultimate because you think it's better. Let's run another. We're mastering icebox today. I'm back, gamers. Sorry. We're watching Pen Flash POV now. One enemy remaining. Oh, man. Uh, I gotta get the team names Whoa. going here. Woodrow's on blue. Okay, so we got Team Street on attack first this half. Ooh, so we do have the fixed defensive formation. Ooh, the same round two coming from Team Woodrow. Over there. As last game. Gotta go. <laughs> oh, they're a bit more ready for it this round. <laughs> kind of interesting because they they sort of get to experience what it feels like to be a higher rated player because a higher rated player is ready for that the first time so like this game they almost are playing in a higher elo like all of them because it's easier to anticipate things That's tough. That's tough. Here. Toxins going up. Okay. Ooh, this harbor Toxin angle mid is back. interesting. Them. Are you eating huge barbecue chicken? Let's see if it's any good. 30 seconds left. I'm trying one of those meal delivery services. Not one of the popular ones. Uh, I'll turn off inventory is my bad. Taken out. I feel like inventories are kind of nice. You want to know what guns they have? Standing ahead. <laughs> Wrong dart, dude. Appreciator. Layer standing. I didn't come here to die. Friends, do you want to give me their food delivery sponsor gift sometimes? Phase three. I love the attack up. I actually love it. How did we get that down? Placing swamp grenade. Oh man. Oh man, they're playing so much better, chat. Look at this post plan. What a dumb peek by Halo. Hey, you're 26 HP, man. Hey, I'll cook meals sometimes for myself. Ooh, we popped this Viper up before planting. I don't like that. After planting. Spike planted. Oh, that makes sense. I don't order them for every day, but during my um, streams where I do the lunch segment, that's when I use them. I mean, we got the bomb down, so now this ult is good. Unless we do that. Why did we do that? We gave Laundry Guy Harbor ult.
I think we got it. Okay, Team Street. Yeah, this attack op. You should run. Take this. You're streaming nine to five while at Tinder? No, I was not. I was streaming five a.m. to nine a.m. at Tinder. Teaching where you do 40 hours, the only way to get done is work on the weekends. Teaching's a bit of a unique exception, Penflash, because one, you knew what you were signing up for, and two, you get summer vacation, bro. I can think of a lot of people who we'd be down for that arrangement at their jobs, where they work, what, four hours on the weekends each weekend? And then they get a one and a half month long break every year, along with Christmas break. Like, you get better um, time off. It's less flexible, but it's better in many ways. Are you kidding me right now? Oh no, Conk, I understand teachers are underpaid, but I don't think we were talking about wages here. I think we we're talking about like work life balance, and that's it. I agree completely they're underpaid, but let's just pretend every job is paid 300000 a year. I could still imagine people it's choosing the teacher me. profession, right? Is... Oh, he's figuring it out. You got to use your pistol after that kill to get the orb. And that's the end. Look at these lurk rounds are coming out way too much. They're on See, eco yeah, dirt, Dad. Yeah, the joke was on them, Jerry, when they reorged us. So at Tinder, we had unlimited PTO, the good kind where they actually approve it. But um, at Match, when they reorged us, they gave us weekly for like paid time off. Um, But they took us in as if we were like 10 years tenured. So I came in with like five weeks PTO and then I left the company like a month later. And so I got paid for all of that PTO. <laughs> What did I just miss? Let me look at this. Oh, he left clicked it, didn't he? Oh, Woodrow! Caution here. Breaking them. Yep. Nope. <laughs> Not yet. Spike down, B. Why did Selmir have to bomb that whole time? Spike left. I'm out of here. I told you they were going to attack so much better this game. <laughs> Yup, nice and patient. I wouldn't have even given that fight, but you know what? You take those. They're way better at being disciplined in the post plant. Yup, exactly. And that's how you win rounds on this map. And no, neither team's playing plant denial very well yet, because it's very hard to do that. And so because the bomb is going down so consistently, the attackers are dominating. Thrash did not clear this. Nah! Nah, that's criminal. Here. Spike planted. Uh. Last player standing. Your 
Yes, dude, their attacks look so much better. Ooh. Punish him. As you do it now, he doesn't. You can't plant top B with Wingman unless you go up there. Orange just keeps making noise on this drop down. Ooh, good nade. Tell me I don't care. That angle can be questionable. 30 seconds left. Thanks, little man. Uh oh. Woodrow has to defend this body. One enemy remaining. Oh, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Iso wins. Contract complete. Good flank, Street. Show me a target. Making cover. I suggest you move. Easy. Oh, come on. Street played that correct. That sucks for him. Enemy. Spike planted. Uh, my TLDR notes for you are the the lurkers. You guys have to chillax sometimes. Um, on attack especially, we need less lurk rounds. The the defenders are already committing slow resources to dealing with you, so you should not lurk in that scenario. You need to start playing with the team more. More dynamic contrast or range between uh your slow and fast rounds. Those plans are getting converted way more consistently, the, and the reason why it was so attacker sided now is because neither team here was capable of denying the plant, which is the mini game on Icebox, which means Silva players, you got to get your shocks in order. Viper player, KO player, Killjoy players, you got to get your mollies in order. There were multiple times where the Killjoy molly was like on the bomb and they still got the plant off, which means you're too slow. So if you can figure out how to deny that plant more effectively in your solo queue games uh, you're, and you can call attack like you did here, you're probably gonna have like a 90% Icebox win rate. Hey, Wuhujin here. Did you know that I stream every weekday doing VOD reviews and playing ranked? If you enjoy the videos, the best way to support me is to show up live. If this video was just uploaded, it's very likely that I'm streaming right now. All of my coaching is free, but that means I need to make money in other ways. Please consider supporting me with a Discord subscription if you can afford to do so. I run many live events for my tier 3 subscribers as a thank you for letting me pursue my passion every day. At 2,000 subscribers, I'll be booking a flight out to EU and to APAC to play in-houses on your servers. Thank you for supporting me.